Oh, this is good. This is good. You guys always bring me the very best. Architecture. And that's what we're going to be talking about today on this quick take where we go and look at Scandi PWA's plugin architecture and see if we can apply it to a Create React app. Now, so what I'm trying to get to is this. Back when I was doing Java Enterprise work, right, we had the Enterprise Java Bean stuff that you could go and take an existing application and change out the driver or change out some of the business logic by just changing some of the beans in Java world. Now, when we went to... Node.js and React, we've kind of created more vertical applications that don't have that same kind of customizability. Or do they? Let's jump right into the code. I guarantee you'll see something new. Heck yeah, you're going to see something new. Let's do this. So I'm going to go and create a new directory in my temporary folder called Scandi. And it's going to be a mono repo, but we'll get there. But the first thing I want to do is create a, a CRA application within that. So I'm going to do yarn, create, react app, and I'm going to call it growlers. Okay, and I'm just going to bring up VS Code. Cool. We've got our growlers directory. Everything looks good. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring in my list of taps. Don't worry about it. This is just some data that I have lying around. That's pretty good for demos like this. I'm going to put in a growler source and go into growlers. The next thing I'm going to do is install Chakra. So that's going to be our UI toolkit. All these links and all the source is in the description. So it's right there for you. So let me add Chakra. That'll just be our UI toolkit. Make it nice. Also over in the description, you can get a link to this gist that has basically a run through this whole video that I'm working off of now, and includes some stuff like in this case, the replacement for the app.js that we're going to use to kind of get this bootstrap real quick. So we can get to showing off the Scandi PWA stuff. So now that I've put that in there, I'll start it up and we can take a look around and see what it looks like. It's a pretty simple application. It just goes and gets the growler list from my local Happy Valley Growler store and puts up you know cute little images and whatnot. There you go. So here we go. We got our default header up the top. We've got a component that lists all of the various possible taps, actually just a subsection of them, and then a footer. So let's go have a look over at the code. We just bring in Chakra up at the top. We're importing that beverages list. And then we have a header, a footer, a, some business logic, in this case, a filter that takes the list of beverages and just slices off the first 10. We've got a class-based component that has a render function that does a filter first on those beverages and then does a map to go through each one of the, those beverages. And on each, it does a little render add to cart over here that returns currently null. So that'd be an interesting extension point for folks to be able to extend on this. And then we've got our app that just basically, you know, puts up the header, the footer, and the tap list and puts it all in a nice body so that we can see it. All right, cool. So what's next on our playlist? So we're going to add Scandi PWA scripts. Now, this is basically a replacement for React scripts. So let's go add that. Okay, then we go over to the package JSON, and I'm going to replace... React scripts for build and start with Scandi PWA scripts. And there you go. Cool. And now we want to add on this Scandi PWA definition into our package JSON. And eventually we'll be adding some extensions. So that's how you extend stuff. In Scandi PWA terms, the, the host app for these extensions is a theme. It's just because Scandi PWA itself is, is primarily a theme around Magento, so that's kind of where they're playing, but it doesn't really matter. It's a host app in this case. All right, so now we're going to create a, a new file called, our new folder called extension. I'll create a new terminal for that. Back in the top level directory, we're going to create a new extension directory in there. And I'm going to go into extension and just do a yarn init on that. So yarn init. I'll add dash y. There you go. Okay, looking pretty good. 
no, no problems with that. So next thing we want to do is turn the parent directory into a mono repo. And that's actually a lot simpler than it sounds. Again, let's go back up to the top level directory again. I'm going to close out a couple of these files to make sure everything's cool. And we can keep an eye on just what we're doing here. So yarn init dash y at the root level at this point. Cool. And the first thing I need to do is set that to private. And the next thing I need to do is define the workspaces. So in this case, the workspaces are extension and growlers. Cool. And once that's done, I'm going to go and clean this up a little bit. So I'm going to RMFR the node modules in growlers, as well as the yarn lock in growlers, just to make sure everything's you know up to date and cool and all that. And then I'm going to rerun yarn at the top level. So this is going to set up essentially that, that mono repo that's going to oversee this whole thing. OK, looks good. Now, you don't have to do a mono repo. You can just do like hard linking and that sort of stuff. But this just makes it a little bit easier. So I'm going to go into Growlers again and then yarn add extension at 1.0.0. And that's adding that version is actually really important. That makes sure that it, it connects with that extension project over here, right, which doesn't really have anything in it. So let me go just go and add a few little bits to that. I'm going to add a source directory inside of extension. I'm going to add a plugin directory inside of that. Let's go, let's go take a look, source and plugin. And then I'm going to create a new file called extension.plugin.js. And that's just going to export a default of nothing at the moment, just like that. Cool. All right, well, let's bring up Growlers again and see how we're going. All right, cool. So that's working fine. The last thing we need to do is go over here to the package again and set up that we want to enable that extension. So let's go over here to extension, enable you. And I think we need to rerun it one more time. But in the meantime, I want to go over and start setting up the extension points in this. So let's go over to our app.js and show you how to go and set up some extension points. So the first thing I want to be able to extend are these, these headers and these footers. So I'm going to go over to our playlist and jump down here to the namespace stuff, right that. And I'm going to pop that on top of header and footer. So this is telling the Scandi PWA Webpack extension that this is an extension point for me. This function is now an extension point. So I can go over here and grab Growler's header like that and go back to extension plugin. And I can just paste that in as a key and then give it a function as another key. And from there, I want to give it, let's see, something new. So let's go here to uh, Chakra UI. I'm going to bring in header or heading from Chakra UI React. like so, and just put in a heading with Happy Valley Growlers. Save that out. Come over here, refresh, ta-da, Happy Valley Growlers. <laughs> How cool is that? So. That's given me extension points into modifying this application with externalized code in another NPM project. Yes. Okay, so let's continue on a little bit. We'll go and uh, diff change out the footer as well. My custom footer. And now down here, we have a new footer. It's custom to that. Let's go change out that business logic. So I'm going to go in again, copy that namespace tag down here to filter. And we'll change that to filter. And this will allow us to go and override the business logic if we want to. Don't have to. It's cool. It automatically just goes with the default if you don't specify anything. So let's go to filter again. 
We'll chain down that one. Now we're going to get beverages. So let's see. I just want to take, uh, all right, we'll take beverages, zeroth item on that one, and then we'll slice off the first three. See how that goes. There we go. Nice. And so now we can even manage business logic through this. This is just crazy cool. Okay. And the last thing I want to show you about how to do is go, you can even do it with member functions on a class. I'm going to go, you can replace the whole class. You can replace just part of a class. So I'm going to go and make an extension point on this tap list component and change how we add, how we do render to cart here. So we've added the namespace go over here to tap list. And this time the syntax is a little bit different. We're going to do member function. and then give it the member function name. So in this case, render, let's see, what, what was it again? Render add to cart. There you go. And I'm going to go and do a button. Add to the cart. We don't have button yet, so let's bring that in. Okay, here we go. Nice. And now we've got add to cart buttons for each of ours. And of course, the end consuming application could go and modify or you know, create its own logic around how to do add cart and all of that. So this is just a really great way of starting to think about your Create React app as a framework as opposed to a, a highly verticalized application, a framework where people can grab it off the shelf, go and take some of those custom extension points. Maybe they get grab data, maybe they're a database driver, maybe they're UI and go and customize how that works. Okay, so this is really cool, but I think I wanna take it to the next level yet again. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna Dockerize this thing. So I'm gonna go down here to Docker file and grab this out. And this is gonna go into the top level directory. So we'll go over here, we're gonna create a new Docker file, paste that in there, and I'll walk you through it. So it's just gonna use node 12, it's gonna set up the app is the in working directory and user source app is pretty standard. It's going to copy everything, which is not great, uh, but I'll get there in a second is to optimize that a little bit. We'll run yarn. We'll then go into the growlers directory, which is our host app. We'll run our exposed 3000, the port 3000, and then start it up. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is go and build that. And I'm gonna go over here to our package JSON and just add in some scripts. The first one is going to clean up everything. It's gonna remove the no modules and all that. So that's gonna be a little bit. <laughs> and then it's gonna run that Docker build. So let's go and shut this down. And I'll go back up into the main directory. So I'll use yarn docker build. And while that's working, I'm gonna go and get a shell script that I've created to make this a little bit easier on myself called run.sh. So let's go create a new file called run.sh. And I'll change that to actually run. There you go. So what this does is it basically, first off, it opens up that port 3000, pretty standard. It runs the image in interactive mode, just means that you can at least control C it. Uh, it and then here's the, the critical part. Well, actually it goes, it goes to growlers. That's, that's the tag that we're creating. Uh, but in this case, the really critical part is that it mounts the local directory where I am and where I run this shell script out of to the extension. This is gonna be so cool. So what's gonna happen is any directory that you're in is gonna act as the contents of the extension directory. So that means that you've got this dockerized, standardized application that's gonna run, and then you just go and create a new directory anywhere in, on any system, and then put in the, your extension stuff in there, which may have configuration, may have overrides, all that stuff that we've seen so far, and run that Docker image and then run the web server with your extension as the starting point. So really, really cool. All right, looks like it's done. Just a few more seconds to go and finish up the Docker build. Cool, okay, so now it's done. I'm gonna go over into the extension directory because that's where you need to be to do this run.sh. I'm gonna make sure that the run.sh is executable and then I'm gonna run it from the extension directory. 
All right, let's take a look. Hey, there we go. Happy Valley Growlers. And let's actually make a quick change to that so I can see it. Changed. There you go. Run it again. Okay, cool. Nice. All right, but let's really see the potential of this. So I hit Command Control C, got out of that. And now I'm going to get rid of these so we can clearly see this. I'm going to copy extension to their competitors, Bigfoot Growlers. Bigfoot Growlers also uses the same application, but in this case, they're going to change it to Bigfoot Growlers. And they're going to show, oh, I guess, eight different beverages. And they're going to say Bigfoot uh, Footer. Bigfoot Footer. Yeah, there you go. And then they're going to say add to the Bigfoot cart. They're going to make all these little changes. And now they're going to go into Bigfoot and they're going to run that same application out of that Bigfoot directory. So now Bigfoot becomes the extension directory. So it gets you mapped in with using mount points in Docker. So really, really, really cool. And hopefully this works and shows off the potential of packaging your application as a standalone Docker file with these extensions that allow you to go and extend it. Let's bring it up. <gasps> How cool is that? So Bigfoot Growlers in the header, add to Bigfoot Cart. All of our changes are in there. You can go and change all kinds of stuff about your application. All right, more links and documentation are included in the description. Enjoy. It's a break in the rain and we can film outside again. So, okay, wasn't that cool? I love that I get requests from folks to like, hey, can you show off this really cool new architectural paradigm on your channel? That's wonderful. That's actually one of the big reasons why I built this channel in the first place was to get you information about these cool new architectural paradigms. So really glad I can make that happen. I wanna hear from you though. Do you have any questions or comments about this? What do you think? Do you think it's as cool as I do? I, I hope you do. Be sure to put that in the comment section down below or jump on the Discord server and I'll answer your questions to the best of my abilities. Now, I do wanna take a moment to say a huge thank you to Alfred's over at Scandy PWA. He was the one that did a lot of the work on this as well as the work to do the React script stuff, which makes it so much easier to demo off all of his great work. So thank you so much. And if you have any suggestions for things that you wanna see on the channel, sell me on it. Hit me up and say, hey, I got this really cool thing. You should check it out. And uh, if you can sell me on it, then I'll make a video on it. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button and share it with your friends. Also hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. But in the meantime, from myself to yourself, be happy, be healthy, and be safe. Ah, oh, feels so good to be able to film outside again. <sighs> Loud dog.